Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church in this roaring crowd. <laughs> We're small and mighty today, and that's perfectly fine because it's very cold. You knew I was going to say it. It is very cold. Um, <laughs> let's take a moment to greet everyone worshiping with us online. Just give a little wave back there. Thank you so much for being with us from hopefully a warm place. Um, and this morning, the radio and online services are given in memory of Helmer and Jenny Krugerud, as well as the bulletins are given in memory of Esther Schwartz and Charles Nelson. So we remember their friendship and presence among us, and thanks to everyone who gave in memory of them today. Um, there are some changes to the flow of worship, so... It was, tradition, it was going to be a contemporary service this morning, but we've switched to do a traditional service. So um, Pastor Kendall and I will be announcing which hymns we'll go through, but um, we'll be using the regular Cranberry hymnal today instead of having um, contemporary worship music. So just a note there that the bulletin will look a little different, but we'll get through it together. <laughs> Uh, tonight, believe it or not, we're going to be doing an all-night lock-in for the youth. Um, so 7th through 9th graders will gather here at 6 p.m. Um, there'll be a couple sessions of required confirmation material tonight. Um, and then beyond that, if they want to stay the entire night for uh, games and food and fun, um, that is also going to be happening. So... <laughs> Send your prayers to us as we stay up late and um, hope for energy amidst all of that. <laughs> but it will be a blast, and I love Lachlan, so 
looking forward to that. Our next mentor meeting is next Sunday. Uh, that's for eighth and ninth graders and their faith mentors. That'll be at 10 a.m. again next Sunday, the 21st. And then another youth event coming up this month on Sunday, January 28th, the movie Trolls 3. How many of you have seen Trolls 3? Yeah, I've never seen it either. <laughs> um, but that'll be an exciting event for our youth. Um, that's at Grace Hall, down with the TV. Um, there'll be popcorn, snacks, and uh, all ages are welcome. So encourage, if you have a youth in your life, to go to that and to bring a friend. That's from 4 to 6 p.m. on Sunday the 28th. Um, and then tomorrow, there's going to be a combined event of Cooking with Grace and my plant-based Bible study. Um, so if you're looking for a good meal and good conversation and engagement with Scripture and one another, um, that's beginning 5.30 p.m. tomorrow, Monday, January 15th, down in Grace Hall. We'll have um, spaghetti and uh, vegan meat sauce. So if you're interested in trying something new out, um, feel free to check it out. It's delicious. <laughs> okay, so to begin worship, we'll sing uh, 520, Dear Jesus, at your word, please rise in body or spirit. Continue with our confession and forgiveness. In moments of silence, we confess our sins. Gracious God, we pray that you take each of these confessions and accept them as a naming of those things we wish to change. 
Give us the strength to be repentant, finding our way into new ways of being, for only you can change us into the disciples we hope to be. Thank you for your grace this day. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives our sins. And by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our lecture this morning is Art Johnson. Please be seated for the reading. Good morning. Good morning. The lesson is from 1 Samuel 3, verses 1 through 11, and read as follows. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was laying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak. Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven 
opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And yeah, everybody's waving to me. <laughs> yeah, there, how's that? Is that a little better? The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Now I should read again, maybe. I think we're good. You may be seated. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll blame it on the cold weather. I'll, uh, I hope it's okay that I'm a little closer to you. We stay warmer when we're closer together, right? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? That was Nathaniel's response when he was called by Philip. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? So Nathaniel has some opinions. Nathaniel has some assumptions about Nazareth. I wonder if you ever make any assumptions. I wonder if you have any opinions about anything in life. I've seen his type before. I know he'll never change. Well, she's always so negative. I know exactly what she'll say. He won't understand. He never does. It's always been like that. It's never going to get any better. Nothing good can come out of this situation. People of faith, people like Nathaniel in the Gospel reading this morning, people like you and me, we make assumptions all the time, don't we? We make assumptions all the time. And sometimes our assumptions are about other people. Sometimes our assumptions about how they will behave, what they will say, what we can expect from them, what other people think, or how other people behave. Other times we look at particular situations, maybe even in our own lives, maybe our marriages, maybe the state of uh, our country, or maybe the uh, state of the Middle East, or maybe even what's going on in the church, and we make assumptions about those things. Maybe it's about a teenager who lives down the street, who drives a noisy car late at night and disturbs the neighbors. Maybe it's about the new noisy neighbors that just moved in. We are sure, aren't we, oftentimes, that nothing good can come out of these situations. Then there are those times when we look at ourselves, or when we look at a part of our life, and we also make assumptions. The illness we face each day, maybe the addiction that we hide, Maybe the hurts that we've caused others. Maybe it's assumptions about our loneliness or our lostness or our grief. And and we say to ourselves, well, this is never going to get any better. How can anything good come out of Nazareth? How can anything good come out of these situations? We may or may not speak our assumptions out loud, but they rattle through our heads, that's for sure, and they certainly influence what we do and what we say. And you know what happens when we assume, right? I won't go there, but you know exactly what happens when we assume. The old saying has some truth to it, but I'm thinking of something else. These assumptions that we hold, these assumptions we make, destroy relationships. They can destroy ourselves. They can certainly destroy love, and they can certainly destroy life. And we think we know more than we really do. Assumptions act as limitations for us. They narrow our vision. They close off the possibility of change and growth. Our assumptions hold at bay a different way of being or a different way of doing. They hold at bay even healing. 
So I'm curious about your assumptions today. Ultimately, I believe that our assumptions impoverish our faith and proclaim that there is no room for God to show up and to do a new thing or to do a good thing in our lives, wherever we might find our lives. Now, if you still remember the gospel reading, it's Nathaniel who responds to Philip, who is telling him about Jesus. And he says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And it's no coincidence that Nathaniel is sitting under a fig tree. Did you notice that when he makes this comment? He's sitting under a fig tree. Strange. But maybe it's the fig tree that gave Adam and Eve the leaves behind which they hid from God and themselves. Do you remember that story from the very beginning of Genesis? And it's the fig tree that Jesus will later curse for producing no fruit, no signs of life. So Philip, Nathaniel is found sitting under a fig tree, and Jesus notices this. I think our assumptions become our hiding places. I think our assumptions are oftentimes not fruitful. They keep us from engaging life. They keep us from engaging ourselves. They keep us from engaging others. And it's hard to see God when we're filled with all of our assumptions. Nathaniel has as much faith, I believe, as the next guy, but, but Nazareth? What good can come out of Nazareth, he asks. No way, not, not in Nazareth. And I think that we all have our Nazareths. We think they are about other people. We think they are about particular circumstances or even pieces of our lives. Mostly, though, our assumptions are about us. Our assumptions are about our own fears our own guilt, our own losses, our own wounds. We take our past experiences, real or imagined, and make our life's assumptions, and these very assumptions can keep our lives shallow and superficial. If we assume, then we do not have to take any risks other than what we already think is around us. And there's no challenge when we hold on to our assumptions. There's no challenge in thinking deeper. There's no challenge in thinking broader. There's no challenge in life. It's so hard to see, and I know this, it's so hard to see life in the midst of death. There's so, it's so hard to see hope in places of despair. It's so hard to see the good and the beautiful in places that are despairing, places that are bad, places that are ugly. It's, it's sometimes just easier for us to assume. And so we do. But the work of God is not limited by our assumptions. The work of God is never limited by us and what we think. For every assumption we make, there is a deeper truth, I believe, to be discovered, a new relationship to be experienced, and a new life to be lived. And that's why it's good for us to hear these scripture texts this morning. It's good for us here to hear all of these call stories again this morning, and we have a lot to choose from. We've got Samuel from the Old Testament, we've got Nathaniel and Philip and the New Testament, and tomorrow is the birthday of, that we celebrate, Martin Luther King Jr. So we're literally surrounded by all of these call stories. Samuel, being a priest in training, was used, used to answering calls to his name. He was to be Eli's right hand, even in the middle of the night. Sometimes 
you have to be ready to answer the call at the most inconvenient hour. Now, I've gained a new appreciation for people who do that, for doctors and for firefighters, for nurses, for medical care workers, for paramedics, for EMTs who, who carry a little device around. It's called a, a little beeper, right? They carry a beeper around, and when it goes off, they have to be ready to go. They have to be ready to go at an instant. They have to be ready to answer the call right now, no matter what's going on. They have to be ready to answer the call immediately. They might just be sitting down to enjoy a family meal. They, they might have just fallen asleep. They might have been asleep for a while. And then all of a sudden, the call goes out. The beeper goes off. And they jump up. It's kind of like the bat signal for Batman, right? Um, the doctor grabs his medical coat, the nurse grabs her stethoscope, the fireman grabs his helmet and boots, and they are off in a flash, even up against the terrible cold of uh, a winter's evening. They receive a call, and quickly they answer, yes, and they go. Well, more often than not, not our answers to those things that call to us, even to the alarm clock in the morning, have you ever noticed? It's not so much a yes, but it's a yes. <laughs> it's a lot different. Because we are a hesitant people. And a lot of times our hesitancy is because of the assumptions that we hold in life. We are cautious we are curious, we are full of assumptions. We are not overly committing like Nathaniel. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? When Samuel received the call of the Lord, he received this call at a very difficult time, but his answer ultimately was yes, even though it was a difficult, even though it was an unpleasant call, he knew what needed to be done. I think Martin Luther King Jr. also found himself in a similar situation when it came to his Christian sisters and brothers. The larger church was not too happy with all of this marching and with all of this boycotting that was going on. Much of the Christian church was ignoring the clear call of God to stand up for the poor, the marginalized. Those Christian leaders, and there were many of them, decided to ignore the voice of God and the call of God found in scriptures, found in the stories of Jesus. And, and they decided that God was not calling to them, that it was safer not to take a side in the 1960s, to not hear God's call lest they end up in jail. And it was from jail that Martin Luther King Jr. wrote his most famous and I think inspired words for those Christians who did not speak up against racism, those Christian quietists who thought it'd be better to say nothing at all. This is what Martin Luther King Jr. wrote. We will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the hateful words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence, he says, of good people. That we will have to repent for the appalling silence of the good people. That was what he wrote when he was incarcerated in the Birmingham jail in 1963. But from behind those prison bars, Martin Luther King Jr. was jailed for refusing to sweep under the rug hundreds of years of bad, loathsome, ungodly behavior in the form of segregation and persecution and inequality. And King called this world to a higher truth, a higher calling that God had intended for humanity. 
and it was no easy task. And of course, you know the story. March after March, where King stood up, followed this call, until just 10 days before Easter, 10 days before all Christians celebrated the resurrection of Jesus, King was killed on a balcony preparing to talk about the rights of sanitation workers, those people who clean up for the rest of us. This is what King wrote in a book that he entitled Strength to Love. Listen to these words. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The true neighbor will risk his position, his prestige, and even his life for the welfare of others. And of course, we know that he did. King was not perfect, but he had some prophetic words for the world. He had some prophetic words for you and for me. He had to set aside some of his assumptions and follow a call and a work that had their foundation in Jesus' words of love for everyone. One more quote from Martin Luther King Jr. I know I'm giving you a lot today, but listen to this one. This was in his mountaintop speech just before the night before he was assassinated. Dr. King describes why he is glad to be living in the 1960s. Despite all of the racial problems, King states these words, but I know somehow that only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. Only when it's dark enough can you see the stars. And I see, Martin Luther continues on, and I see God working in this period of the 20th century in a way that men in some strange way are responding. Something he says, is happening in our world. See, well, he wrote that on April 3rd, the evening before he was assassinated. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of our difficult situations? Well, I think you know the answer to that. Yes, the one who is good comes out of Nazareth. And this one who is good calls you into goodness. This one calls you to help those who are hurting. This one calls you to love those in need. This one calls you not to pass judgment on others, not to live by your assumptions, but to hear this voice of God calling you to a greater love, calling you to a peace of God that is surpassing all of our understanding and certainly surpasses all of our assumptions. So let's you and me, let's live into that calling, shall we? Amen. Our hymn is also about our calling. The hymn is Here I Am, Lord. It's hymn number 574, again, in your uh, red hymn books. 574, Here I Am, Lord.
people's pain I have wept for love of them They turn away I will break their hearts of stone Give them hearts for love alone I will speak my word to them Whom shall I send? Here I am Lord, is it my Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in. Please rise in body or spirit for the profession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers. Woven into and alongside the whole body of Christ, let us pray for the church and all within God's miraculous creation. Holy Spirit, we come before you this morning, broken, whole, afflicted, mending. Continue to grace us with deep inner healing. Whatever we need this morning, God, help us to honestly speak it to you. Help us confess, forgive our neighbors from our hearts, and accept your gracious love today. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we are gathered on a freezing cold day. We are gathered to worship you. Fill us today, God, just as you called Philip and Nathaniel with immediacy and grace. Call us again into newness today. Call us to challenge and face our own assumptions about our neighbors. Refresh us, inspire us, and turn us outward in love and service. As Nathaniel exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. 
May we also be filled with energy to follow you. Call us again today. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we thank you for your presence amongst the grief, sorrow, pain, and healing in our own neighborhood, alongside us and our friends. We ask you to continue to work your comforting love alongside those most in need. God, this morning we lift up especially Jeff, Liz, Sharon, Lee, Arlene, Maggie, Wayne, Don, Mike, Rick, David, John, Joey, Tammy, Brad, Tom, Jack, Lauren, Jim, Monica, and Jennifer. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy artist, bless the lands, water, and air you creatively crafted. The second creation account of Genesis calls us to tend. Help us be tenders, honoring our neighbors, all you have made, for the sake of future generations. Thank you for our human neighbors we gather with today and know in our hearts. Thank you for the amazing plants and animals we live alongside, too. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding Spirit, we thank you for music and artistic expression. You are the creator, and we are made in your image as creators. Lead us to praise you through our music, singing, learning guitar, playing organ or piano, whatever we might do or appreciate. Bless the sculptors, potters, painters, and dancers. Nudge us all to find ways to praise you through creative expression. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, make us a community continually moving outward. Remake, build up, and send us out to share the gospel through kindness and through generosity. Help us share your love and liberation through vulnerability, storytelling, and celebration. Amen. We continue with our offering. The hymn is number 798. as this unseen and 
admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Will you love the love you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be? touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you can call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. So as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion here at Grace, if you're joining us online or listening to us by way of the radio, if you want to join us for Holy Communion, take this time now to uh, grab a piece of bread, uh, some grape juice uh, from your home, or, or maybe even some wine from your home, and we will offer the words of institution, and you can commune in your homes or commune one another in your homes uh, as well with, with us. So we'll turn to our offertory prayer. Let, let us pray. Light of the world, we give you thanks for the church, for its people, and its mission to be a beacon in the world of hurt and sorrow. May these gifts be transformed into what people need most, sustenance and care. Bless them, we pray. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so we remember together in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, lead us into your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And you may be seated.
And if you're at home and you have your bread and your wine, you can uh, receive uh, uh, this with the words and you can serve each other the body of Christ uh, given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Peace be with you. Invite the congregation to stand for the blessing. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in God's grace. Peace be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our closing hymn is uh, 676, Lord, speak to us so that we may speak, 676. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.